everybody, this is Grace Machado, aspiring biologist and hopefully future herpetologist. And as I mentioned in the previous video, I did have a surprise for you guys and I introduce you to Catra. Catra is an albino conda, which just means she is a visual albino with the anaconda gene. As you can probably notice, she's got a little bit of an attitude. Why are you huffing at me, huh? I didn't do anything. Well, with that surprise, let's go ahead and cover the anaconda morph and what it does to the western hognose. Now it's very convenient that I actually have her as an albino conda because I also have Mango who is a normal albino, so I'll be able to show you the comparison of the two. She's just trying to dig into my hand right now. <laughs> um, but basically, unlike the other morphs that I've talked about before on the channel, the anaconda gene is a pattern morph, so instead of affecting the color, it affects how they look, well, how their patterns look. It affects the spots that they have. And when they have one pair of alleles, which just means that instead of two, they just have one. I have another video explaining genetics that's a little long, but it should help understand a little bit. But if they have one pair of the anaconda gene, then they just get a reduced pattern, which looks really, really nice, honestly. And some anacondas have more reduced patterns than others, but that's basically what it does. However, when you have both of them, then you get what is called the superconda. And the superconda has a complete reduction of pattern on their scales. And we have over here Quasi, who is not an albino, but he is a toffee belly, which is close enough for this example. Just because you can see that unlike Mango and unlike Catra, he has no markings along his back, which is very, very cool. Also, most superconda's which is just when they have both of the alleles for the anaconda gene. They usually have a solid belly color, unless they have something else like pastel, which can sometimes cause speckling. Um, now with mango, I'm gonna actually put Quasi away. I have some footage um, that you guys are probably seeing that shows off his scales a little more, but right now it looks like he's in blue, so I don't wanna handle him too much to bother him. Right, little guy? Yeah, let's go put you back. And comparatively, we've got Mango here now. The Anaconda just kind of does that. It reduces all of the patterns that it has. And just as I mentioned earlier, he is an albino. But as you can see, he still has a lot of spots going down his back. Absolutely no reduction. And if you look at his belly, you can see that he still has a lot of speckling on it which is completely different from what the anaconda usually does. One actual very good way for you to um, figure out if you have a normal or possibly a low expression condomorph is to check its belly. If it has a lot of checkering, chances are you've just got a really pretty looking normal. But if it's got a nice solid black belly or barely any checkered spots on it, you might just have yourself a condom. So I hope that makes sense. Um, basically, the summary is we've got normals that have a bunch of saddles on them, even though this is an albino, but ooh, careful. In regards to the anaconda, we've got normals. We've got the anaconda that creates reduced patterning. And then we've got the super version of that morph, which is the superconda, which creates no visual patterns on their backs. They still have their cute little head stamps though. So uh, let me know what you guys think. What do you prefer, the conda, the super conda, or just the way that the normal spots look? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you have a great day. Bye.